Welcome to the lecture on Tundis metallurgy. So, we have already uh, discussed about the role of Tundis in continuous casting and uh, we know that the uh, Tundis is uh, acting as a metallurgical reactor and uh, you know uh, because the steel is coming from the ladle and then going from the Tundis uh, to the mold. So, uh, some of the uh, you know treatments are even done before uh, the metal enters into the Tundis uh, and uh, uh, of them includes like uh, there may be uh, treatments to the melt so that uh, certain kind of inclusions are you know uh, or, or inclusions are basically filtered out uh, or uh, for controlling the uh, composition of the steel also. Uh, however, uh, you know we must know that uh, uh, what are those aspects also which needs uh, to be studied uh, regarding the treatment which is done in the Tundis also, uh, which has basically uh, the bearing on uh, the metallurgical behavior of the product and what are those capabilities which affect uh, that way. So, that uh, you know uh, basically will be covered under the aspect of uh, uh, this topic that is uh, Tundis metallurgy and uh, especially we will talk about uh, you know those uh, phenomena which uh, take place inside like we can have certain treatments related to the uh, modification uh, or treatment so that the uh, inclusion removal uh, uh, is more or uh, you know other uh, you know aspects like the vertex formation or so. So, we will have uh, the light on uh, uh, these aspects. So, so uh, what we see that normally uh, as a metallurgical reactor we uh, feel that in, in the Tundis uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there should be uh, uh, I mean the Tundis should be working in such a manner that uh, there should be uh, you know even you know heat uh, throughout the uh, domain in the Tundis then uh, there should be proper you know flow uh, configuration inside the Tundis. So, that uh, there is proper use of the space which is there or, or proper use of the volume of the Tundis. Then uh, you know you have to do something also your flow uh, control has to be such uh, that uh, there has to be uh, you know minimum of the inclusions. Uh, which should further go down uh, the Tundis from I mean from the Tundis outlet towards the mold. And uh, also we need to see that uh, how you have uh, uh, to see that uh, the there is no vortex formation when there is a decrease in the level of the Tundis then there should not be vortexing uh, phenomena and all that. So, one of that uh, process is that uh, uh, you may have uh, certain additions like inclusion uh, modifiers uh, like calcium or calcium silicon at the very last minute in the uh, Tundis itself. So, what happens that although we do certain treatments so that inclusions are uh, you know we try to trap them, we try to uh, see that minimum of the inclusions come into the Tundis, but uh, still if the inclusions are coming inside uh, the Tundis then we need to uh, you know uh, have certain treatment and maybe sometimes we add like uh, inclusion modifiers like calcium or calcium silicon you know at the uh, very last minute in the Tundis. So, uh, you know so th this uh, so that basically uh, will help in the control of the inclusions or uh, you know that it will help in the uh, treatment of the inclusions. So, that inclusions either float or inclusions are modified there are I mean, modifications to those, uh, uh, those shape and size of those inclusions or their properties. So, that ultimately is that these uh, inclusions should be uh, you know minimum in the melt. Other as aspect is uh, also about the temperature adjustment uh, adjustment in the Tundis. Uh, you know uh, because from the Tundis it is directly going uh, to the mold. And, uh, if the temperature uh, becomes uh, very less. So, in those cases that may affect the quality of the um, cast because it has to go into the uh, mold and then further it has to be uh, you know uh, 
it has to get solidified. So, many a times what we do is uh, uh, we do the heating, we have the heating arrangement also in the uh, tundis so that you see that the proper you know temperature is maintained throughout the uh, tundis volume. Uh, you know uh, I, we, may, we have already talked that uh, there may be uh, you know uh, change in the flow pattern because of these temperature differences. Uh, there may be uh, formation of the convection loops, there may be uh, you know uh, uh, thermal current which uh, uh, may be there inside that and this. So, that may alter the you know flow configuration inside the tundis. And uh, uh, many a times if the temperature is becoming uh, you know very very small in certain areas which is uh, uh, most likely a dead uh, reason inside the tundis. In those cases you need to have the you know temperature adjustment mechanism you need to heat the tundis also in those uh, you know uh, the uh, liquid in the tundis in those uh, areas. So, that the temperature is well above uh, you know uh, its melting point. So, that uh, uh, you know there is uh, no undesirable thing happen like solidification inside the tundis itself. So, uh, we do the plasma or induction heating uh, especially when we wish to cast with very low superheat. So, especially uh, when we are uh, trying to cast with very low superheat and if uh, there is a temperature drop undesirable temperature drop in certain region then uh, that may be uh, producing some undesirable. Uh, you know outcomes. So, in those cases we have to go for uh, certain kind of heating mechanism like uh, plasma or induction heating. So, that is also you know uh, done. Uh, so, ultimate aim our uh, ultimate aim to uh, in the tundis will be uh, to have the uh, clean steel and uh, uh, you know that is because uh, uh, you know this the requirement for the steel has been increasing over the years. So, it is because uh, uh, you know that uh, they are used for critical applications and the presence of these inclusions uh, make the properties of the steel inferior. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, what has been the practice that uh, we try to uh, improvise those technologies we are working on and uh, the better technologies. So, that uh, we can get rid of the inclusions. Uh, and in, in fact, our effort is to go for the inclusions because uh, there are mechanisms to uh, filter out the um, larger size uh, inclusions, but then we have to see that uh, the, these sized inclusions, critical size inclusion, uh, you know, sizes become less and less, which must be removed. So, uh, it is because uh, all these properties like strength, ductility, durability, corrosion resistance. So, they, they we are working on it uh, to have the its uh, uh, you know improved properties over the years uh, be, and also uh, that is possible normally if you are making the steel cleaner uh, you know of the non metallic inclusions uh, which are most likely deteriorating these properties uh, for which we normally use steel. Like if the inclusions are there the strength may, may go down, ductility may go down and durability as well as corrosion resistance all these things are impaired all these properties are impaired uh, if you have uh, the presence of these non metallic uh, inclusions. If you talk about the non metallic inclusions in the steel normally they are of uh, uh, two type uh, one is the indigenous oxide inclusions. So, they normally are formed by the uh, deoxidation of the uh, steel melt and then uh, you have exogenous uh, you know uh, inclusions. So, there are basically these are the two types of uh, uh, these uh, inclusions. So, if you talk about these indigenous uh, oxide inclusions. So, uh, they are basically removed during the refining and degassing of melt in the ladle itself as we discussed that uh, you know, we do certain treatment in the ladle itself we try to uh, you know remove these uh, uh, indigenous oxide inclusions. Uh, you know uh, by um, during that refining as well as the degassing of the melt in the ladle. Uh, but some of these non metallic oxide inclusions of a small size uh, still remain suspended in the melt. So, they will be uh, coming to the uh, tundis and then uh, if you have the then you have the second variety of inclusions that is uh, 
your exogenous inclusions. So, they are formed by the reoxidation of uh, deoxidized steel melt by air or by the entrained slag into the melt during the melt transfer from the uh, ladle to the mold. So, uh, that basically is because of the reoxidation of these um, deoxidized steel melt which we have done. So, uh, that there is uh, further you know chances of reoxidation and uh, also because of these uh, slag which is uh, uh, you know uh, these that uh, uh, slag into the melt which uh, uh, you know may uh, pass down. So, uh, what happens that these uh, inclusions which are of the uh, exogenous uh, origin. So, which is formed because of the reoxidation. So, they are normally much uh, you know larger than the uh, indigenous ones and uh, they are very very uh, harmful. So, larger inclusions they will be uh, harmful than the uh, you know smaller ones. So, uh, you know how they are harmful because the inclusions you know uh, what they do is uh, they will be uh, causing the problems during the casting, rolling and heat treating processes. So, uh, you know as you know that if there are inclusions they will be uh, as the, the defect in the cast product, uh, if they are uh, in the rolling. So, uh, rolling also they make difficult uh, and also during the heat treatment uh, process. So, in the all these processes because uh, when there are inclusions their property is not as same as uh, that of the parent metal, it has uh, not the ductility same normally they are brittle. So, uh, what happens that they result in the failure of the uh, steel during its application. So, that is why uh, you know these in, uh, inclusions are uh, you know uh, said to be uh, removed mostly. We try to remove these uh, inclusions as uh, uh, to the extent as we can. So, uh, you know steels with more demanding uh, processing and applications require inclusions which are smaller in size and uh, number density. So, it means that uh, uh, if you have to have steel of better quality. So, there the requirement is that the inclusion size should be smaller and, and similarly the number density also should be uh, less, uh, less number of inclusions should be there as well as the smaller you know uh, inclusions uh, you, you try to have. Uh, uh, that so that's why your more demand you know demanding processing and applications are uh, required nowadays, and uh, critical inclusion size decreases as demands become more and more stringent. So you say that uh, the inclusion size should be, you know, not more than uh, this size whenever we talk about uh, those uh, you know very demanding steels or wherever you have to use the steel for the critical applications or so. So, the, uh, the end user will uh, specify that the critical inclusion side should be this one. It means you, you should not have an inclusion which is of larger size than a particular size that is your critical size of the uh, you know inclusions. So, uh, what happens that uh, you know uh, these larger inclusions are there. So, uh, they will be elongated the, in the uh, steel matrix as thin stringers along the rolling direction. So, what happens that when you have larger inclusions and when you roll uh, these uh, slabs or bullet billets uh, or, or ingots itself uh, when you are uh, you know further going for the rolling operation. So, uh, you know they are uh, likely to be elongated uh, you know and, and they will be like a, a thin stringers uh, in the rolling direction. So, if you have the rolling direction like uh, rolls are uh, uh, moving. So, like this of uh, upper roll like this and lower roll is moving in that way. So, it will be taking the um, you know uh, strip in forward direction and your uh, um, you know larger inclusions. So, they will be elongated in that uh, direction. So, they will be if it is of this size. So, they will be flattened and it will be in that uh, you know in the rolling direction they will be uh, elongated. Now, further when uh, the hot rolled these steels are uh, further subjected to the cold rolling, then uh, what happens that uh, you know uh, as the temperature comes down, so they become brittle and uh, then when you are doing the cold rolling, so they will be uh, breaking into the pieces of small size 
because they will be you know, brittle at the uh, the uh, cold rolling temperature and, and that will be affecting the homogeneity of the uh, you know component they will be affecting the properties of uh, the material and then there may fail also you know at, at those points. So, you know, what we do is uh, you know harmful effect of these large inclusions which uh, we get they can be reduced by modifying the uh, chemical composition of the inclusions uh, to lower their uh, melting temperature and to make the inclusions deformable uh, during uh, hot rolling. So, uh, as you see that uh, if you have the larger inclusions, so the one, one way is that uh, you can use these uh, chemical modify the chemical composition of the inclusion, uh, so that you can lower their melting temperature. And uh, then uh, you know the inclusions can be uh, made deformable during the hot rolling. So, one of the way you can have their effect you know uh, less and less harmful will be uh, by making uh, these uh, treatments. Then uh, impurities which are dissolving in the melt and form precipitates uh, during solidification. So, you have also impurities. Uh, which may be dissolving in the which uh, would like to dissolve in the melt and it would like to form precipitates during the solidification. So, you also need to uh, minimize them as well. So, uh, that also needs to be done so that your steel becomes cleaner and cleaner. Uh, if you look at those impurities, uh, typically you have phosphorus and sulfur. So, uh, these elements will form phosphides or sulfides. So, these phosphides they will be at the austenite grain boundaries and sulphides will be in and around the austenite grains. So, uh, normally uh, you know uh, they are uh, uh, making this uh, uh, formability of the steel you know they challenge that uh, property of the steel. So, as uh, you know uh, it is difficult to remove these impurities in the tundis because uh, uh, so, they have to be uh, this, this should be minimized during the hot metal treatment, the BOF process and the lateral furnace processing before uh, bringing the melt to the continuous casting station. So, you know once they are coming to the uh, you know tundis, it is very difficult uh, you know further uh, to remove them because they have to be removed through the, through the uh, treatment through certain reactions chemical reactions or so. So, your efforts should be uh, you know there. Uh, so, that uh, uh, you know uh, during the hot metal treatment uh, like in the BF, BF process or the in the ladle furnace processing uh, before you are bringing to the uh, tundis itself you try to uh, remove uh, you know try to have minimum of these phosphorus and sulphur and there uh, and the formation of the phosphides or sulphides at the uh, grain boundaries. So, this uh, you know uh, needs to be ensured so that uh, you know uh, the chances of having those compounds formed at the uh, grain boundaries or in and around these austenitic uh, grain boundaries uh, is uh, minimum. Uh, so, uh, you know what we uh, do is normally uh, we go for the uh, flotation of inclusions. So, one of the way is that uh, uh, you try to have the um, uh, the, the flow structure in the tundis in such a way that uh, the inclusions have the tendency to float up. So, even with the best ladle metallurgy practice some inclusions particles will be retained in the melt. So, as we discussed that uh, we try to uh, you know do the treatment in the ladle. So, that most of the inclusions we are trying to uh, you know uh, remove from there itself. Uh, but uh, still uh, as we had uh, seen uh, you know the uh, some of the inclusions they are likely to still come uh, in the tundis and uh, uh, you know we try to we have to now try we have to try uh, to remove these inclusions. So, there cannot be any such treatment you know as we can do earlier to the ladle or in the ladle itself. But then uh, by altering that uh, flow pattern uh, you know we can uh, think of uh, doing something. So, that these uh, inclusions can be removed and uh, one of the way is that uh, you know by managing the residence time of the uh, these uh, particles or the flow you know of the melt 
uh, in the tundis. So, if the adequate residence time is being provided in the tundis, there will be opportunity for at least the larger of these inclusion particles to float out. So, as we had uh, uh, talked about these uh, role of these uh, tundises in the uh, casting. So, uh, there also we had uh, talked that uh, you know these uh, steels uh, which are going uh, you know steel uh, which is coming inside the tundis. Now, these fluid particles uh, spend certain time inside the tundis. So, it has some time before it comes out of the uh, tundis outlet. Now, this uh, time that is your residence time. So, if it is very very small these inclusion uh, particles which are coming inside the tundis it they very very. So, it will have a smaller and smaller chances uh, you know to come out of it. So, uh, you know the, the way is that you give adequate residence time. So, you should have the flow structure in such a manner that uh, once the uh, you know uh, uh, liquid steel comes there. So, so, you should have the flow in such a manner that uh, you have uh, the time sufficient time for these inclusions uh, especially the larger inclusions uh, to float out because the larger inclusions inclusions are having uh, a smaller density as compared to the melt. So, once you are they are settled and they have some time then in, in, in that time basically uh, they will be subjected to the buoyancy forces because of the uh, you know uh, smaller density and then slowly they will be uh, floating up. So, that is known as the uh, flotation of the inclusions. So, that uh, is a natural phenomena which has to occur because of the density difference and normally you know density difference will be about 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 times or maybe even go up to 0 0.67 times also. So, you know they, they will have the chance to float up, but for that as we talked that the residence time has to be uh, adequate and uh, if the residence time is less uh, we can do something by, uh, by which the residence time can be increased in the tundis. So, those are the means why uh, you know there are many means like uh, you may use certain flow modifiers or uh, and, and mostly uh, by that or by you uh, can have it on this design where inlet and outlets are uh, positioned in such a manner that your residence time you know uh, uh, becomes maximum for a particular configuration or for, for particular you know uh, geometry of the tundis or with the use of flow modifiers. Uh, if the residence time is short or the tundis is poorly designed so that short circuiting or bypassing occurs the inclusions will be retained resulting in poor quality finished product. So, uh, what happens that if your uh, tundis is uh, such uh, that uh, the uh, inclusions uh, you know residence time is very very small. In that case uh, the, the inclusion which is coming inside the uh, tundis most likely uh, they will try to go directly towards the outlet and they will be going towards uh, from the tundis outlet to the mold. And once they have entered into the mold uh, certainly uh, there will be more uh, you know likely that these uh, inclusions become part of your product. And uh, then when they are uh, coming uh, going inside the solidified region so they are trapped and uh, then uh, uh, you know that becomes a part of your product. So, um, they are likely to be you know further rejected. So, uh, so your uh, you have to see that uh, you avoid the short circuiting or bypassing. So, and, and mostly it uh, uh, you know occurs because of very poor I mean sometimes poor design of the tundis or uh, uh, you know you have not uh, used uh, the uh, proper uh, you know properly these flow modifiers in the tundis. So, all these concerns uh, need to be addressed before uh, you know uh, and you must check that what is the average residence time. Uh, so, that uh, uh, you can be sure that if the residence time is larger then the uh, if there the there is uh, inclusion you know they are uh, likely to be you know going at the uh, top of the uh, you know on the tundis you know surface. So, and there they will be trapped. So, that is how these inclusions are uh, removed. Then comes uh, another aspect which uh, needs to be understood is in, in the case of uh, tundis uh, is the you know, vortexing. So, 
this phenomena is uh, of concern uh, when your vessels or containers are being emptied. So, as you know that uh, the ladle will be bringing the liquid steel from uh, the shop and then uh, they will be emptying that uh, uh, into the uh, you know um, tundis and uh, the tundis uh, will be uh, delivering the um, uh, melt to the uh, mold. Now, uh, one ladle when it is emptied then another ladle comes and uh, if there is uh, if you need to you know uh, 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 siphon out all the uh, liquid metal in the tundis uh, so that your next uh, uh, you know cast grid is of a very dissimilar type. In that case you need to lower down and then further you are uh, uh, you know pouring in the another grid of uh, steel into the uh, tundis. Now, while emptying when the level will come down to a certain uh, uh, height then there may be a vortex. Uh, formation at the outlet, uh, particularly when the liquid level will fall below a uh, critical value. So, uh, what happens that when the liquid level will come down, so that can be understood like you have the this is the tundis and uh, if suppose you have the outlet here. Now, what happens that when the this is your uh, inlet and uh, liquid metal will come out. Now, what happens that uh, when we use the uh, you may use the flame modifiers or so. Now, this uh, this is the level and it will be coming down and uh, once you come to certain level down then you may have the formation of the these vortexes and this vortex formation is nothing but because it will be happening when the level will be falling down to a certain uh, you know uh, you know level. So, uh, that is critical level. And uh, this vortexing is nothing but what it uh, does is it will try to entrap the you know air, uh, and and that uh, air bubbles will be appearing, and then that will be going inside that may try to oxidize the steel, so that is uh, harmful. So we don't uh, want the level to go down below a certain limit that is vortexing. So particularly when the liquid level will be falling below. Uh, the critical value and such vortexing is basically undesirable uh, for both ladle as well as the tundices. Both in both the cases if the vortexing occurs uh, it may lead to the air as well as the slag entrapment because at the top you have the slag layer and uh, if there is vortexing occurring in that case the air or the slag may be entrapped and it may go inside and once it goes inside then uh, that will be uh, that may be likely to have uh, the there is likely to have the slag inclusions or there may be uh, you know uh, oxidation and there may be formation of inclusions there may be oxidation of the melt also. So, uh, basically uh, you will have to see that these vortexings uh, is avoided. So, uh, this uh, vortexing uh, we can in uh, you know minimize through the correct on this design and uh, uh, in particular through the appropriate placement of wares and baffles. So, uh, this vortexing can be minimized by if we have proper on this design as well as the on this furniture we use that is your uh, wares or the baffles or dams. So, you must have the appropriate placement of these uh, uh, wares and baffles. Uh, so, so that is basically helps in ensuring that there is no vortexing uh, in the uh, tundis. So, um, uh, so that uh, um, that is another part which uh, uh, you know has to be taken care of uh, while we try to see you know that uh, what should be uh, you know uh, those uh, mechanism by which you can uh, you know avoid these uh, vortexing. Apart from that we also talked about uh, other mechanisms are there like you have the heating mechanism you can use the plasma torch we, you do we do the other heating mechanism. So, that the uh, temperature are you know uh, kept um, uh, homogeneous inside the tundis uh, you know uh, because uh, uh, and in many cases as we have studied uh, in most of the cases it is challenging when we are using the steel of which is to be used uh, with very low superheat. 
So, there are uh, some ways by which all these uh, uh, plasma heating or uh, with other mechanism you can have uh, you know those uh, uh, you have a plasma torch. So, that is uh, being used uh, normally uh, for maintaining that temperature. So, all these uh, you know uh, aspects uh, uh, needs to be studied and we will be talking about them in, uh, in the lectures to come. Thank you very much.